Peninsula Link. So will you come down with me or with the group and go to the site, see what's done and uh, make sure it doesn't happen anywhere else along the, the route. Well, Sue, thanks very much. Uh, you know I always enjoy your company um, uh, and uh, I think the, the most important point that you raised here is uh, essentially uh, is there an environment management plan in place? There is and uh, the Linking Melbourne Authority are required to act in accordance with it as are the constructors. Um, if, if the question uh, therefore says uh, are they acting in accordance with that management plan and are we doing all we can to minimise the impact upon flora and fauna? I think it's a legitimate question that has been asked of me to satisfy myself about and I will ask those questions and as I said I'm more than happy to make uh, representatives of those people charged with the responsibility of delivering the project to do so um, but look I don't see any point in me uh, inspecting a site uh, yes ultimately I'm responsible but uh, I better make sure that the people who are actually doing the work uh, managing it properly and appropriately. I have every confidence they will. They've got a long established record in this area. But if there are concerns. Yeah, Mr. David Nichols has a question. He's working on the yeah. Bandicoot Management Plan. Thank you, Minister. I spent the last week um, trying to. I spent the last week trying to establish um, what the management plans were. Um, I'm quite familiar with the EBPC plan for the pines. Um, I have serious reservations about the way that has been uh, made from there to be no works until the management plans have been approved was what was the was what the EBPC asked us asked of the process. But what in fact Linking Melbourne have asked Canberra to do is to stage that process and that fragments it and means that works occur that will prevent options that might have been available had the full management plan been approved rather than fragmented. But I've also been in, we're here today to look at the area beyond the pines. And I've spent the last week trying to, despite having extensive contact with Jenny Carberry, um, Catherine Gretsch, your environmental management in Lincoln, Melbourne, um, I have really good contacts in Canberra, um, but I've spent the last week trying to establish what the environmental management was for the areas outside the pines, and what I've... It's a work in progress, um, but my understanding is that there's an environmental strategy, there's an environmental management plan, and there are site plans. And I understood that at last Monday, after the work was done, the site plan had been approved, but DSC and LMA and um, ACOM are still the independent reviewer. They are still trying to agree on the management plan. We I have asked for that to be public. You tell us that you've consulted with us. I'm reporting to you that the consultations aren't credible. They, they don't have the confidence of people that come to those conferences with goodwill. We're asked to, we're asked to sign confidentiality and code of conduct, which are deeply offensive and quite undemocratic and quite unnecessary. Um, I don't, I'm a scientist and I've worked with confidentiality agreements with and partnership agreements. Um, but the way the way we're being the way we're being asked to implement those code of conduct are unpleasant and unnecessary. Um, if the, the project's supposed to be transparent, but it's not. Thank you, David. I've been informed that the minister needs to go by his advisor. Uh, in, a, in a democracy, we're entitled to have these vigorous discussions. I think we need to thank Minister Pallas for being here. He has, um, if you Google him on the, uh, and look it up his webpage, he has an email. You can contact him. I urge all of you, before we say a final thank you to the Minister, to contact him. Have all your friends contact him. We're in an election year. We need Mr. Pallas and all the other members of government to understand how deeply we're concerned about these actions.
thank you very much and look thank you for, for the opportunity to speak to you and I know we we haven't reached a consensus of thinking here today but uh, there have been some genuine ex concerns expressed David the issues that you've raised about code of conduct I'll make some inquiries about that because I actually think people do have a right uh, to get up and to express their view and uh, advocating on behalf of the environment is a critically important thing to do um, uh, uh, now that might sound like a strange thing coming from a roads minister uh, but I, I, I do take these responsibilities seriously. I hope everybody charged with construction takes those responsibilities seriously. I'll be making inquiries to assure myself that that is the case. Uh, but more importantly, I'll be uh, making, uh, asking LMA to sit down with representatives of this group to go through what the processes are in place and if there are any legitimate concerns about the management of uh, uh, the works and the protection of, uh, of uh, the flora and fauna, uh, we hope to take your advice and see what more we can do. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Howard. And thank you again, everyone, for coming. And thank you, Janet Rice, who's also standing for the Greens Party in Footscray, for bringing along this sound system without which we would not have been heard, no matter how democratic it is here. Thank you, Janet.